around this time last year, I was making a lot of videos on weapons for future tanks. Basically, I would take a short look at emergent technology and talk about how useful it might be. Eventually, I kind of just ran out of topics. So that sort of video was discontinued. Though with the release of War Thunder's Warfare 2077 event, I figured I could use that to basically cap off the series. I guess you could consider this and everything wrong with as well. Though I'm not really going to be criticizing the event tanks themselves. More talking about the concepts they use. Anyway, let's jump right into it. First of all, the Minotaur, Hydra, and Harpy all use a common chassis. This is a pretty common theme in sci-fi, since it makes producing these various vehicles cheaper. While that is true, the concept of basing all your ground vehicles on one chassis seems a bit dubious to me. While light vehicles like IFVs, SPAA, APCs, etc. could pretty easily share a common chassis without compromising their capability, I don't think a main battle tank could. Theoretically, you could add applique armor to armor the vehicle like a main battle tank, but the effectiveness of that armor would be nowhere near its contemporaries. In general, when sticking to one base you usually end up limiting yourself pretty severely. You can't just keep slapping stuff on because of weight and transportation limits. I think we can expect light and support vehicles to share one chassis, while main battle tanks have their own specialized base. That's generally how things have been and continue to be, despite some outliers like the T-14 Armada. In War Thunder, the vehicles probably all use the same base because that makes them a lot easier to model, especially for an event that's only going to last a few days. For the crew compartment, generally I think we can expect a lot of tanks to have that sort of crew capsule in the hull approach, but with some minor changes. While keeping all three crew members in the same spot makes protecting the crew easier and reduces weight, it also presents some unique challenges. For example, the crew can't easily service the gun if something goes wrong. The commander's visibility is also reduced, despite the presence of a CITV. The US actually conducted experiments with this type of crew layout on the HSTVL, one of the first vehicles to use that sort of crew arrangement. They ran tests with two and three man crews. While the two man crew could operate the vehicle effectively, every test participant agreed that they would like having the commander up in the turret as an extra set of eyes, one that could more easily see what's up ahead and relay instructions. They also noted that maintenance with the two man crew was basically impossible. I think that most tanks will probably use the HSTVL's approach, where the driver and gunner are down in the hull, while the commander is up in the turret. From the OMT concepts that were released, it seems like a pretty safe bet. The optical camouflage systems are a bit of a mixed bag. Using them on the move would be pointless, since the tank is going to be kicking up tons of dust and smoke. A system that could hide the tank's thermal signature while waiting in ambush would be useful, but again, you have to balance that out with cost and complexity. Vehicles designed to destroy tanks might use such a system in the future. For weapons, I'll try to be brief, because quite frankly there are a ton of them, and if I went through all of them this video would be way too long. I'm going to be focusing on two things, the Minotaur's gun, and the ATGMs. The gun is described as having a composite barrel, which I'm assuming actually means it has a composite overwrap on a steel barrel. This helps reduce weight and improve performance, while also being relatively easy to manufacture. The XM360 cannon, which might show up on the US's next main battle tank, uses such an overwrap. As for what type of gun it actually is, it's probably an ETC gun, a gun that uses plasma ignition to burn propellant in a more unified manner. ETC guns are one of the most likely types of guns to appear on future tanks, alongside case telescoped ammo guns. CTA guns are already starting to appear on production vehicles now. For the ATGM, wondering if it'll appear on future tanks isn't even a question, because such a missile already exists today, and is seeing widespread use. The ATGM in-game is more or less a spike missile, which has some pretty insane capabilities. The spike is essentially launched vertically, where it then levels out and cruises. From there, the operator can use the missile's camera to lock into a target. The spike can either be guided manually or automatically. There's footage out there of spikes being flown to the open hatches of tanks. It's pretty nuts. While spike missiles are selling like hotcakes, I don't think they would appear on every vehicle. On IIVs and ATGM carriers, certainly. But with main battle tanks, they would be a bit redundant. You've already got a main gun designed for other tanks. Adding another anti-tank system would complicate things. The missiles would increase weight, complexity, and cost not to mention the impact on crew training. And finally, there's the tank's power plant. The vehicles in War Thunder's event use unspecified 3,000 horsepower engines. These engines have around double the horsepower of modern tanks, but I don't think that's the direction actual tanks will go in. Modern tanks, for the most part, have plenty of horsepower as it is. Instead of more power, what they need is better efficiency. For this, there are two very attractive options, hybrid engines and adiabatic diesel engines. As for what adiabatic engines are, they're high efficiency and don't require cooling. And since you don't need cooling systems, they're also more reliable. The US Army conducted a lot of experiments with adiabatic engines, but they never really got anywhere. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.